Hi, I'm Pam Kirkham, and uh, this is my studio. Welcome to my studio. I actually work in three different places. I have my garage where I do my multi-canvas uh, works because I had a custom pegboard made, and I'll attach a photo of that to this. Um, so when I'm trying to do the multi-panel ones, I might have three different canvases, and I need to do a swipe across all three and get the hit the tops and bottoms, and so I can hang them on the pegboard um, how they would hang on the wall. And then I can catch that bottom swipe. I can swipe across the surface. I can get the top and then I can get the bottom of the next one and surface and the top and so on. So I use a garage for doing those kinds of pieces. And then in my basement, I have my um, press for making my tiles, pressing my tiles. And I also use that for doing uh, like painting 3D sculpture. Um, for instance, I did some pieces for the Krasl for the Downtown St. Joe project, and uh, I have a big 4x8 table down there that I can put those sculptures on and paint them at a, a comfortable level. And then I have this studio, and this is my upstairs, one of the upstairs bedrooms, and um, I do my smaller work and, you know, stuff that I can work on in the wintertime when it's cold and I can't work in the basement or garage, um, then I work up here. So um, I'll just uh, show you a little bit of the studio. I do a lot of pieces at the beach. And it always looks different because some things are going out for sale, you know, some things are going to a show, and so lots of times I have some empty spaces where there normally wouldn't be. You told me about some recent sales you've had on some original pieces. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, you know, who says the market's down during COVID? It's actually up for me. Um, I recently sold four original paintings to two collectors that know each other in uh, Brighton, Massachusetts, which is near Boston. Uh, one was Butterfly Euphoria. That's from my Fight or Flight series. It's a big uh, three by four foot painting. Uh, and then I also sold another one, well, two piece, it's a two piece piece <laughs> from um, the, the same fight or flight series. And it's called uh, Flames in the Darkness and it's a dragonfly. And then a, the companion piece that goes with it. So it's a little 12 by 24 and a 12 by 12 inch piece that hang together. And then I also sold an etching that I did way back uh, when I went to Kendall. And um, so um, that's in the process of being reframed. And I did want to say, you know, there probably are a lot of artists watching this. And I, I was floored when I w got ready to mail the um, large three by four foot piece. It requires a crate because the size increases once you bubble wrap it and get all the packaging in, on there. And it cost $425 to mail this painting. The painting was like 2,343, something like that but $425 just for UPS to, to mail this painting. I was floored, but the client had no problem with it. I was a little surprised at that. Um, and so when you mail something like that, um, if you mail it by UPS, UPS will insure it for the full amount um, and they're much better about reimbursing you if there was damage, um, if they have packed it themselves. If you've packed it and you send it through UPS, they're going to be really scrutinizing that package and may not pay the full value of the painting that was ruined. So that's just a heads up on that. Uh, make sure you send it with to get a signature so that you know it got to the person that you were sending it to. You know, it's a lot of money and you don't want to uh, risk that. Okay. So how do you go about choosing your subject? Well, right now I'm focusing on uh, water and movement for a new series that I haven't named yet. Um, almost every day I make a trip down to the beach and take a lot of photos. Um, and then I select photos that I think might make a good painting in the future. Um, sometimes I just start with part of a photo um, and then I might use um, parts, you know, different photos, parts of different things from different photos. And so, for instance, on this large painting over here, um, this is a big three by five foot painting. I'll give you a little second to take a look at that. And so I had, a, I had taken a video of um, the waves coming in. And so I found the point of the video where I liked the way the waves were. 
because that was what I was going to use to do this. And so you can kind of see, you know, where that's coming from. But it's not like I'm copying it exactly. It's going to change a little bit. Um, and then the same thing with the sky. I started with this sky picture for inspiration. And I kind of started painting it like that, but you can see it really changed. It, it got the same feel of movement, but it really changed from the sky photograph. So, and this painting obviously is not finished. Um, I had gotten to a point where I started to put in the brown and I, I didn't like what was going on here. So I just gave up on this painting for a while and set it aside and I'll come back to that one later. So here's another painting that I've been working on. Um, I'm in the early stages on this one and basically I've just come in and I, I feel like this is the jewel of the painting. It's where the, the light hits on the water right here. And so I try to work from that area out. And I'm, at this point, I was just trying to get the, the movement and feeling of these waves in here and what direction I want these strokes to go. And so I'm just kind of basically putting in some strokes to get the movement going. Um, the, and the colors are really going to change. Um, you know, I, I do use a lot of vivid color. Um, this one um, will end up getting turquoise next. And so, you know, I'll come in here and I'll start doing some strokes like that with the turquoise, you know, now that I've got my, my movements in here, I know where to put, you know, where to put it. And it'll end up looking much um, looser and freer. Your use of color is so vibrant. How do you decide what colors to use? Well, I'm all about vivid color. You know, I, I, my dreams are always in color and it's what drives what I do. Um, life is in color, so how can I leave that out, you know? Um, I use some colors straight from the tube, but I mix colors that I don't have. And sometimes I feel like the color is more important than the subject because color affects the viewer first and makes them feel the mood I'm trying to project. And then analysis of the subject from the viewer comes after that. Um, no. So that's pretty much uh, my video. Thank you for listening, and um, have a great weekend.